In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to use the checkboxes in Google Sheets, including adding color to your sheets, updating formulas, and then changing the values on a graph or chart. This is gonna be a really useful video if you wanna make your sheets more dynamic and user-friendly. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're gonna learn a few ways to use the checkboxes in Google Sheets today. And before we get right into the meat of this video, I'm just going to remind you that if you're finding any value in these videos, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, as well as leave a comment down below. That really helps the channel out and helps the channel grow and allows me to continue to keep making these videos. So without further ado, let's get into this. So in order to add checkboxes to your Google Sheets, Google Sheets actually has a checkbox function. So what I can do here is I just have a list of data. In this case, it's athlete names and bench press scores, but it really could be whatever you want. And I have a box here that's just going to signify whether these players are active or inactive. And what I'm going to do is put a checkbox in here. So what I can do is just highlight all of these cells here. And then if I go to insert and come down to the bottom here, there's an option to put checkboxes in there. And now it has these dynamic checkboxes that I can check or uncheck inside of the cell. Now, one thing that's important to note for these checkboxes is the default value when it is unchecked is false. And then if I was to check it, the value is going to be true. And we see that up in the formula bar. And we're gonna be able to use that true and false in a lot of our different formulas to signify whether we want certain actions to happen. The first one I'm gonna show you how to do is to actually change the color of this, these cells based on um, whether or not the checkbox is checked or not. So what I'm gonna do is highlight the first group of cells, in this case, this row that I want to change, and I'm going to use what's called a conditional format. So I'll go down to format, go over to conditional format, and it's going to open a box on the side, and you can see that it's already added a color there. The nice thing about conditional formatting in Google Sheets is it actually updates in real time so that you know what you're getting. Now, in this case, when I come over here to the right-hand side, the format rules are set to that the box is not empty. And you can see that there are values, in fact, inside of these cells, so it's going to highlight. What we want to do is use one down at the bottom called custom formula. And now I'm able to actually type in a formula the same way that I would in the formula bar in a normal sheet, um, just in this formula bar here. And the formula we're gonna check for is whether or not that checkbox cell is equal to true. So what I can type here is equals if, and when I open this up, I'm going to um, add the cell that the checkbox is in, in this case, B2. And I'm also going to lock in the cell reference of B because I am going to want to take this formula and move it down to um, B3, B4, etc. So I'm just going to lock in the B. And what this is saying right now is if B2, and the default value for this is it's going to look to see if this is true. So B2 in this case will equal true. It would be the same as if I typed in here equals true. So that is saying the same thing. So right now, if B2 equals true, if I take away this equals true, it still means the same thing. And then I'm going to type a comma. If we know an if um, formula, it's going to ask me, what do I want to do if this is true? And I indeed, I want to return a true value. And if it's false, then I want to um, return a false value. So basically, what this formula is saying is if B2, which um, stands for if B2 equals true, then I want to return true. If not, I want to return false. And if we check this cell here, you can see now that we get the, um, the green color that we were looking for. If we uncheck it, then we get no color. Okay, so that's a quick way to add that. So now when I hit done, I'll close this off and I have that rule set in my actual cells here. What I can do is just copy these, control C, and then I can go down all the way and just right click and then hit paste, format only, and it will have pasted that format on all of these cells. Okay, so that's a quick way that you can start to add color to your cells 
based on whether a checkbox is checked or not. Now the second use case that you might want to do is actually include values in a formula if this is checked. So the formula I'm going to show you how to use is average ifs, but we could use this same trick with many different formulas. So what I'm going to go or what I'm going to do here is in this formula bar, I'm going to type equals average ifs. And when I open this up, it's going to ask me for the range. In this case, the range that I want are these bench press values. And then when I hit comma again, it's going to ask me for my criteria range. In this case, I'm going to select all of the checkbox cells. And then one more time, I'm going to check to see whether this is true. So what this formula is saying is average ifs, the first, the range that we want to average is the bench press values. And then the condition one is the range will be the checkbox cells and then we're checking to see whether that is true and when I hit enter you're going to see it gives me a divide zero error because there actually are none checked true so it's trying to average nothing but as I start to check values you can see now that the average range changes so it is only taking the average of the cells that are checked off okay so that's number two how you might want to do it and you can include little things like that in any one of your formulas if you want to include or uninclude um, different values based on whether you have a checkbox checked or not. Now the third thing that I'm going to show you how to do is actually add or take away values from a chart based on whether these are checked or not. And the way that you're going to have to do that is you're going to want to filter out the values into another um, data set based on whether or not these are checked. Now one formula you can use for this is query and what query does is it just checks a data set and then based on a condition it will pull out those values. So I'm just going to type in this top box here equals query and it says um, runs a Google visualization API query language but what we're going to use it to do is return these values here. So it's going to ask me for the data and the data that I want is A to C. So it is going to take all of these columns here. And then when you're using query, we can actually use Google's query language where we can actually type in values. So the, the formula part in here goes in quotations and I'm going to type in where column B is equal to true. And then I'm going to close that off and close the whole thing off. So what this is saying is I want you to query A to C and only return the ones where B equals true. And when I hit enter, what you'll notice now is that those values get returned and I'll just kind of center format these a little bit so that they look nicer. But as I click new boxes, those values get added into the queries or sorry the query return. So now the last piece is all I have to do is click anywhere in here and I'm going to go to insert and hit chart and Google Sheets is pretty smart. It knows that I want to use this range as my actual chart but we have to set up a couple things. Right now the data range is going from G1 all the way to L15 because that was the maximum amount of data. I'm going to change this to just go all the way down to L to include all of the data. I will hit OK. And then it is now giving us our athlete name down the bottom, but it is giving us a label of that true. So if we take away this label, now you will just see the athlete name and the value. So now as I click new athletes, what you're going to see is they get either added or subtracted from the chart. And you can use this in many different ways to display different types of information. But this is just an example of what you can do with Google checkboxes. So I hope this trick helps you out. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. Comments help a lot too. And if you'd like to see more videos with these little quick trick or quick tips and tricks, feel free to comment down below and let me know what you would like to see next. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.